Kimberly Olson here back for another episode of the Gold Digger World. And I'm so excited to share with you one of my favorite Gold Digger dudes, Simon Chan. <laughs> He's an honorary Gold Digger and has been for years and years. And he's somebody that I actually looked up to and still do when I first got into network marketing because his MLM Nation podcast is one of the top rated podcasts in the world. But most specifically to me is how he teaches people how to serve and lead and be amazing network marketers and really elevate this entire industry. And he's just a good human. So Simon, welcome on. I'm so excited to have you. Hey, thank you for having me here, uh, Kim. It's uh, I'm excited, and this is easy. Normally, I'm busy. Like, I just woke up from my morning nap routine. I get up at like 4.50 to get stuff done, my live, and then I take a nap around like uh, 9 a.m., 8.30, and then I have to prepare for the podcast, get ready. But today, I don't have to pre prepare for no. anything. Dr. No, Mate. you get to just show up yes. and be your amazing self. And I'm glad that you take naps, because I do too. <laughs> yeah, and, by, so by the way, Thank you for having me here because you are awesome. I love the gift you gave me. You know, if anyone of you want to listen, talk about touching people's hearts, being a giver, Kim is definitely it. Um, yeah, we had her on the show. You can check out 566. This was like probably two years ago, but she talked about using Facebook Live. And then, you know, some people send thank you cards and stuff. I get a lot of gifts, but she sent me this awesome plaque with this great quote by Teddy Roosevelt. And I still have it on my other side of my office. Like my and, favorite. Uh, Every time I read it, I, I like tear up and cry. So thank you. And I know everyone should know who you are, but just if you don't mind giving a quick intro of like, tell us a little bit about your background and how you got into network marketing. And then you moved into coaching to really give back to the industry and pay it forward. Do you mind sharing with everyone a little bit about you? Yeah, I haven't met many people like me. Like, uh, I'm a, just a shy, quiet, Asian kid, ugly kid from Brooklyn. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but I, I am a shy, quiet Asian kid. That's the way I was brought up and raised. A very traditional, the stereotypical Asian family. Uh, study, 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 work hard. I was never good at speaking. And English was my third language. And uh, But just from studying, my dad was basically rags to riches. You know, I grew mm -hmm. up in an upper middle class family. Okay. He was very poor from Hong Kong, came over here and studied and became a doctor. And uh, my brother and I grew up really, we, we were like the richest kid in the public school. Went to public schools, yeah. my dad had three Mercedes. Um, but as a kid, I never understood what a Mercedes. I just want to play ball. I want to go to Yankee games, New York Knicks games, and my dad was always too busy. But I thought that was the way it is. You know, you study, you work hard, you, you, have, you work long hours, and eventually you get old, you retire. And then I read a book, and I had a job. There's a low pay, okay? Um, but I loved the job and I was young in my twenties and I was like, well, I'm just going to work hard and climb the corporate ladder. Cause the people that I looked up to at the company, they would stay at the company for 20 something years. You got a corner office, but you still work long hours. That's life. Mm -hmm. And then I read the book, rich dad, poor dad. Mm -hmm. That totally mm -hmm. changed my life. Brought by Robert Kiyosaki. Um, and it's like, you don't need to live that way. I was like, what? I thought you have to work. No, you actually can get paid a lot of money and not work. I was like, wait a second. How come my parents never taught me this? Because my dad was like in the book, the, the poor dad, dad, study, study, oh, study. Yeah, study. the poor dad, yeah, yeah. Right, and that worked back in the 60s and 70s. It definitely doesn't work now, right? You study, study, mm -hmm. go to college and have 100,000, $200,000 in debt. So I was like, wait, I gotta do that. So you know, one thing led to another. I just, I thought about doing a Subway franchise, so, but I didn't have the money for that. And then along the same time, this is, uh, I was doing a lot of soul searching for my life. I read uh, Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren, mm, I love that book. and you know, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, God is a big part of my life. And how this ties in together was, I thought about doing different businesses, and I, Robert Kiyosaki in his book, Cashflow Quadrant, told me about network marketing. And I was like, this is a great way to build network marketing, but a lot of people don't like it. It's a negative perception. And I was like, I thought network, I didn't never heard of network marketing. I was like, network marketing sounds like marketing computer networks. What's so bad about IT or computer business? And I was like, what is going on? So then I researched, and I'm the total dummy. I read network marketing for dummies. Okay, and I was like, I'm going to start from ground low. And I was like, wow, this sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty interesting. And network marketing for dummies, uh, written by Zig Ziglar. I still have that book that says, if you stay with the same company, you work the business consistently, you'll make at least a full-time income. But wow. if you don't work it consistently, you're not going to make it. So I was like, all right, should I really do this? And at the same time, we're going back to uh, Rick Warren's book, Purpose Driven Life. I read the 40 chapters uh, of, you know, 40 days, and I felt like God's purpose for me was to have a positive impact, as many lives as possible. Yeah. And then I thought about, hey, you know, I'm a shy, quiet kid. I never raised my hand in class. And 
but I enjoyed helping. I always enjoyed that. I was a counselor for my for the high school group when I was in church in college. I used to uh, do basketball clinics in Chinatown in New York, helping kids, you know, just to kid, get kids off the streets and play basketball. I enjoyed yeah. mentoring. And network marketing, if you look at it, is not just making sales. If you want the residual income, the passive income that I've learned from Rich Dad Poor Dad, you need to empower people, coach. Yeah. So that I felt it was God's calling for me. That's how I got started. To make a long story short, I just found a company. I was very skeptical by Google that company name and put it Los Angeles, because that's where I live now. And I found a person's random website and I reached I, I emailed him, called him, hey, I want to sign up. How do I sign up? And uh, he called me back the next day for 45 minutes and we talked. And be long story short, that's how I got started. What? That is the coolest freaking story. Like, what? Year, when was this? Do you mind sharing? This was 2003. So that is so ago. epic. Like, you have seen two, two decades of how this industry has evolved and changed and social media and all of that. Oh, my gosh. That is so awesome. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll share something with you, too, right? Going back to the story, because... Um, the guy called me for 45, talked to me for 45 minutes. And said, like, you want to get started? And guess what I said? I was like, no, I, I need to think about it. Oh. Right? I remember I was driving in Long Beach to my small group meeting on a Wednesday. And, and we talked on the phone. And actually, I was going to go to 24 Hour Fitness to work out before meeting with my small group. And he said, you want to get started? I said, like, I need to think about it. So mm. the next day, he calls me on a Friday. It was like, it was like uh, actually, that was a Thursday. Next day on Friday... He calls me and I'm in the uh, Camarillo outlet shopping. And this is the time I thought about, it. I want to do multiple streams of income. And I think this is an important lesson for, for you diggers out there. It's like, I want to do real estate. I want to uh, sell a course, do some info marketing. That's, that's how they call okay. it, info marketing. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to do some stock investing options. And, oh, yeah. and also, I was shopping. What was I shopping for? That, I, I'm, that time, I, you know, for a long time, Kim, I was, you know, I was too embarrassed to say this, but I was going to be a model. Because I was so sexy. Yes, work it. I was going to be a <laughs> model. And I was there shopping for clothes for a photo shoot to get my car, stag car awesome. done. Awesome. I think that's so, so cool. So anyway, he, um, he calls me. And I was like, I didn't tell him I was going to be a model or whatever shopping. He's like, call me back in an hour. So he, after I got home in an hour, he said, are you ready to get started? And, you know, do you think I stayed up at night to think about it? Right. <laughs> I didn't yeah. think about it. I just, some people don't want to make the sale. And I just, all right, I'm just, how much does it cost? It's like $1,400. Sure. Here's my Amex charge it. Yeah. That's how I got started. So anyway, I struggled for months and months and, um, and you know, all that's all those multiple streams of income, none of it worked. Eventually, and I struggled with consistency, but, and I never became a model. And, but the, the point is you can't do everything all at once. You can do everything in life, but not at the same time. And once I got started in network marketing, I realized that was way easier than being a model, way easier than doing real estate where we have no money, way easier. And that's the path I went through. Oh yeah, for sure. That is such a great story. Yeah, the follow-up piece and, you know, the hustle. It's like you were trying different things. Okay, what, you know, and then really got focused on network marketing. So what was your experience in network marketing? How long did you do it for and what, what resulted from that? So when I got started, I, I knew it worked, right? And but I struggled for months months and the problem was the lack of consistency so i would mm -hmm. talk to i think the first couple two three months i talked to like seven people oh right okay. seven and but i thought this is the way it was right yeah. like, and i was struggling struggling i think the only thing that saved me was i'll listen to a training call this was back in you know my team was one of the first teams in the entire network marketing profession at the time to do online stuff so we actually even back in 03 we would send out an audio Really? And if you wow. watched it, you clicked, we could tell whether you clicked on it or not. Okay. Right? So we had a system and, yeah. and, but I didn't do anything, but I would download and we had team training calls and that was back on, on teleconference, teleconference.com. And they would upload them. I'll download them and I'll burn them onto a CD. And then I was listening to this one CD and I was visiting my parents in New York. It was a cold night in December. I still remember the day, December 28th, 2003. Because the guy in the CD was like, oh, you got it. This is awesome business. You got residual uh, uh, residual income, time freedom. I'm like, yeah, yeah, but where's my freedom? I, I, by then, I spent $1,400, $250 a month on auto share. I'm down like $2,000. Where's my freedom? Yeah, where's my freedom, right? My, my closet loss is freedom because I got a pile of products piling up. And then the guy said, well, if you do it on a Monday, 
because you, you're fired up listening to this. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, you got work, you're distracted. And then Thursday, you have your business presentation, you show up, you do a little bit. And then Friday is the Saturday, you know, you got to wind down, it's the re weekend. And the Sunday night, you, you start getting miserable because you hate your job, you start working a little bit. You're never going to make it. Say so you will mm -hmm. never make it. And I actually, I was in my parents' driveway, stopped, and I sat there. I felt he smacked me in the face. I was like, I, I actually rewound down and listened to that five times because I felt he was talking directly at me. Yeah. And that was the day that changed everything. I, I started, I'm going to be starting c consistent. And then I had a mentor and that guy that actually did on the long story, that guy on the audio, a couple of weeks later, ended up mentoring me, working with him one on one. And that oh was God. the thing that changed everything. That was the, and then after that, I started building, I ended up recruiting like 80 something people a year for five straight years. Um, build a build a business, uh, earn over seven figures in lifetime commissions, um, and after uh, I built a team of over two hundred thousand people, and then after like in two thousand, um, and I got you just a couple of weeks ago on May twenty fifth was my tenth year anniversary doing coaching. So I basically just had a congratulations. Thank you. Uh, when two thousand. With a 2002, it seems so weird talking about 2012. It seems like it was only a couple of years ago, but it was like 10 years ago. I had a different yeah. purpose. I felt like God's purpose for me. Uh, my company was just a drop in the bucket, right? right. And, then, and then I wanted to make a bigger impact. So that's yeah. when I transitioned into a, being a full-time generic coach. Yeah, I just went through that too. And it's, you don't know when it's going to happen, but, and you think it never will. And then when you feel it, God's like, I know it's scary to take this step, but I, I have more for you. And the way to do that is to, open it up. You know, yes. I, I know what that felt like, um, probably different than you, but I'm glad that you, you trusted and, and took that step. So you've mentioned consistency quite a bit. And for our listeners and viewers, we are really excited to share something with you. You guys are probably one of the first to find out about this. I would love to know if you're watching this on YouTube, on Facebook, or even listening to the podcast when it comes to being consistent. You know, where are you at with that? Is it something that you struggle with it? Is it something that you beat yourself up for? You know, what's, what goes on mentally when you say you're going to do something and don't like your story with the mentor, how he was like, you know, you got to wind down and there's this whole process of falling off the wagon or going strong for a while. I see this where people go all in and they're like, where's my money? And then they drop off the, the radar. So share with us, you know, as you're, as you're, as you're interacting with us, uh, where you're at with consistency, but Simon, why don't you tell everyone what you've been working on behind the scenes? Yeah. So I, being in the profession of almost two decades, uh, I realized that there's always great trainings. In fact, there's more better trainings now today than ever back in 2003. The only trainings I knew was the CDs that my company sent me or the team right. calls. There was no YouTube, what do you mean YouTube back then? Wow. So, but now there's such great trainings out there, but people are still stuck. Because the number one skill, you know, I asked you this question on my show and you said it, the number one skill is consistency, mm -hmm. right? Because you said it without consistency, nothing matters. Right. There's nothing, no strategy you learn from Kim or anyone will ever work without consistency. So I figured, you know, in the profession that uh, we needed something like that. Uh, I just came out of the book a couple of days ago, the consistency pill. And basically it's like, consistency is not something you're born with. I think that's a misconception. People, well, Simon, you're so consistent. Oh, Kim, how do you stay so disciplined? Mm -hmm. you no, know, Kim wasn't born disciplined, wasn't born consistent, <laughs> right? You had your story, your, your horror stories, your failures, right? But yeah. it's something we learn along the way. And I basically took my experience uh, and also experiences just from talking to leaders like you and realize you want to be c consistent. The seven components of a system. You need a system. And one of the reasons why people, a lot of times they set goals, right? You see this. You go to a convention, your upline tells you to make goals, dream board, and they set a goal, but they fail to reach that goal because there's no system behind that goal. Absolutely. Right. So I'll give you a couple of, give just a couple of the yes, components. Seven I love components. that. Okay. First component behind a system is a checklist. So mm -hmm. if I say, I want to hit $1,000 a week by six months, I want to hit this rank on $1,000 a week. But what's, this, what's the actual things you need to do? And most people are like, oh, I have to build my business. But what specifically do you have to do? Right? You want to build an online brand like you, Kim. What specific? You got to have a checklist. Well, I want to look like Kim. I want to get the results she gets on social media. But do you know the checklist that Kim is doing? Do you, do you know how many reels that she do? And what, how long are they? What days she shoot on? How many people she talks to? Or how many live videos? You got to be specific on a checklist. right? Without the checklist, it's just you know, hopeless thinking. Dream, dream, you're just dreaming. But you got, and that, that applies to like, if I want to be, and you can apply this to anything. If you want to be in shape, wait, if you want to be in shape and get down to what a 15% body fat, there's a checklist of things you need to do at the gym with a yeah. checklist of things you need to eat. The pre 
You number one is your checklist. The second component is you have to create and schedule the time. Right? God is not going to give you an extra minute for that goal. And I think the entrepreneurs, you diggers out there, you're like, oh, I got all these goals. But you know what? I'm sorry, but it sucks. You're not getting any extra minute. How, so how are you going to do all these things that you want to achieve with the same amount of time? So you have, the normal comes, you got to create and schedule the time, right? You got to create a routine. Anything you do consistently is a routine. Create a routine. I remember um, when, and you probably like saw this shift for yourself. So as a network marketer, it's different when you actually start to treat it like a real business. Like I feel like with network marketing, it's, oh, you know, I'll reach out to some people sometime this week. And yeah, you know, yeah sometimes where I started cool. scheduling things and having like calls on my calendar with people, like even coffee chats or connect calls or team meetings, or, you know, how could I, um, like you said, could I put a Facebook live out there to draw people to me? When I started putting stuff on my calendar, like I literally transitioned to, into a boss of like running yes. a business. And mm-hmm. Because, you know, it's um, Parkinson's law. Everything fills into a vacuum, right? So it's when just- you say like, that again, everything fills the Everything vacuum. fills into a vacuum, right? Ooh. So for example, I'll give it, a, give it an example here. Um, have you ever, when you moved in a new house, right? You, you have a, everyone has like a room, a spare room, a closet that's nice. And you're like, well, that's going to be nice. But oh. before you know it, in a couple of weeks, all type of junks, just magic. We have that. that room, yeah, right? we have that. Or like, <laughs> oh, I'm going to do, you know, I want to do this during the weekend. I'm free, I'm free this weekend. And mm-hmm. next, you know, everything is just, the weekend just goes by and you, all the stuff happens there. So mm-hmm. like you said, it's got to be in the calendar. You got to yeah, yeah. schedule it and treat it like a job. And that mm-hmm. was actually one of my turning points was, you know, my, well, my boss used to say, hey, you got to show up for a, a Monday 9 a.m. meeting. I'll show up. You know, sometimes it was like a 5 p.m. meeting. Uh, I always show up. Stay late mm-hmm. at work. I'll show up. And, and then like one time it's like 12 o'clock. Uh, we have a lunch meeting. Well, we, you know, we have food, pizza, salad and stuff like that. And that's why I got really angry. I was like, well, I don't want to go to a lunch meeting. That's my lunch hour, right? I don't want to meet with, talk about this. I don't care about the free food. I want Because that's my escape. Because back then, I used to be so tired. I used to get by 5.30 in the morning, run at 6.15 a.m., get on the freeway to get to work at 7 a.m. Because if I left at a decent hour, it would take me two hours to get to work. If I left wow. at 6.15, I can get there 45 minutes. I'll eat lunch, breakfast, and dinner there. But so at lunchtime, I'll get so tired. Kim, mm-hmm. I will go to, it was a Holiday Inn, like two blocks away. I'll go there in the lobby, grab the USA Today like sports pages, sit there, pretend to wait for a friend, like a guest. <laughs> I take like a 15 minute power nap and then I'll go back to work. And now my boss says, I gotta show up. My boss said, you gotta, you gotta show up. I was like, then I realized, well, what a dumb idiot I am. I would show up for my boss, but I wasn't showing up for my business. Ooh, drop the mic. And that was like, oh my goodness, what a dumb. So what? It's like, just like I was show for my boss. I at that time on my job at four thirty p.m. at a little break, I'll make sure I do fifteen minutes of reach outs during then. And it's a routine. It's a habit. If you're listening to this, you're consistent already. I'll tell you, everyone's consistent. You consistently take a bath or shower every day. Yeah. Right. And there again, there's a checklist to that, right? There's a checklist. Uh, what do you have to do? The soap, what you need, your shower, you need running water, warm water, a towel. There's also mm-hmm. you create and schedule the time. No matter how busy you are, you always take the time to take a bath or shower. That's, and normally it's around the set time, it's a routine. Some of you take showers in the morning. Some of you take in the, at night. Some of you take in the morning at night, right? Whatever it is, there's a routine. So it's the same thing with your business. Go create and schedule the time to create a routine and when it says on the calendar you do this you gotta do it because if you say i'm gonna uh i'll do it i'll do some reach outs when i have time you never never gonna have time it's not gonna happen mm-hmm. oh my gosh that's so good so create and schedule time to work on your business um and then is there any other little nuggets from the seven yeah. steps because everything's in your book right yeah every single well you have a checklist you create okay. and schedule the time number three is determine the strategy Component okay. three determines what's the strategy? How are you going to go about this? So, for example, I'm going to reach out to five people today. Uh, which five people are you going to do a reel and then, like, all of a sudden engage with those new people? Or you go, oh, I'm going to post on TikTok, or are you going to do a live video, or are you going to reach out to your warm market list, or you're going to ask for referrals? What's the strategy? Right? That's number three. Mm-hmm. Number that. four is choose your environment. That's really important. We work in certain environments that motivate us, right? I'm sure, Kim, when you're doing creative work, it's not the same same place as what you're doing and stuff. Like for me, 
when I go for a walk, I get creative, mm -hmm. right? You got to choose that environment. Um, the environment also music. You play yeah. certain type of music. So actually, in fact, when I wrote this book, just to let you about uh, the music, it's like priming NLP. It's like yeah. if if I played a certain song, Kim, it'll bring you immediately back to your high school days. Absolutely. Right. I'm going to bring you back to your wedding day. Right. So another song. Yeah. It's the same thing. So if you want to get yourself to work mode, like before I ever speak, I listen to ACDC Thunderstruck. That fires me up. Whatever fears I have, nervous, like even before I come here, or oh, I'm going to be a Kim's going to interview what I'm going to say, I play something to fire me up. When I yeah. wrote the book, I listened to the same song on repeat mm -hmm. over and over again. And I do it 30 minutes a day. Right. When I was prospecting, before I prospect, I listened to the same song. So the environments are very important. Number five is tracking, tracking your progress. Oh, how many yeah. people have you talked to? Uh, when I say people, how many, how many uh, people have you talked to? Or oh, I talked to 10 or 20. There's a big difference between talking to 10 and 20, but at 20, you get a lot, lot better, mm -hmm. right? Track your progress. Component number six is using tools. Tools, you mentioned one of them, Kim, a calendar. That's a tool you gotta <laughs> use, right? A timer, use a tool. Right? What apps may be contact management that keeps you stay consistent? And number seven, very, very important is accountability. You mm -hmm. need someone to hold you accountable. We're all humans. And yet a simple analogy is you don't want to feel like going to the gym. You feel like sitting, you're calling it, you're calling it in today. But if you met a friend to work out, you'll probably show up. If you actually you hired a trainer, you work out even harder. We all need accountability. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for accountability. So those are the seven components. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited about this. So the consistency pill, get it on Amazon. You can grab the paperback of it, right? The audible. Kindle. So I'm doing a special, I, just for you listeners out there, I appreciate you. I'm doing a special bonus, crazy bonus. Um, if you get the book and hopefully you, you, if you're listening to this right now and release and go get it, I'll go to get on consistencypill.com. Okay. And you can get the free audio book. What? But it expires on June 8th. So you better do it right now, today. Yeah, right okay? now. You also, that the audio book, by the way, is, the, uh, is a $25. If you listen to it afterwards, um, you also get uh, the Kindle version is also 99 cents until June oh, wow. 8th. So okay. go get that. Also, you get a free companion uh, workbook that supplements the book. So, like, oh, so it helps you take action. That. So it's over $50 of bonuses. Now, if you missed the June 8th deadline, you can still get a companion workbook, but take action. Go, you can get on Amazon, but go to consistencypill.com. You upload okay. your receipt there, and then that's where you get your free bonuses. Oh, so that's how. Okay, I was yeah. going to so say. You can buy on Amazon, but go to consistencypill.com. You put your okay. receipt number there, reach out. And if you, you're a leader, you get multiple copies. Uh, there's actually even greater, greater bonuses there. And I don't want to go into details, but you can go to consistencypill.com or the free bonus and goodies are there. One of the cool tips I heard from someone, uh, he was you know a top leader in network marketing. He said he did it for his entire downline. So I did it after that. We have a 14 day automated onboarding that we, used, we did when I was building my team. So I had it at the end that they complete it and they email me their address and they mail them a book. But I heard this leader and he said every single person on his team that joined, he would send them a book. And his retention was like unbelievable. So for those of you that are looking for little things that you can do to stand out, get, this would be such a great book for a new network marketer or someone who hasn't really found their home yet. Imagine being able to get these seven steps laid out, get their plan in place, but really start to imp imprint into their brain. Consistency is everything. It doesn't matter how smart you are or how great you are on camera or how charismatic you are. If you're not following up and you're not showing up and you know keeping your pipeline full, you're obviously not going to grow your business. So yeah. That might be something for you leaders to think about. And you know what it's like, because a lot of times the skills are important, but once you teach, but skills can fade and, you know, if they get rejection, you lose it. But once you teach the mindset, the person never, you know, whatever we things they go through, once you have the mindset, like that's like 95% of success, they can yeah. encounter whatever challenges. And speaking of that, you know, I think one of the two causes for lack of consistency is lack of time. That's time mm -hmm. management. So inside the book, there's also the consistency productivity regimen that gives Ooh. you time management tips. Uh, and also rejection is a big fear, like being emotionally, you know, uh, not attached, right? Rejection. There's yeah. 10 steps to what I call the rejection killer that help you overcome the rejection so you stay consistent. Because I realize those are two big obstacles, especially part-timers. A lot of you diggers who got jobs or kids and other stuff to do, yeah. that would help you out a lot. 
I love that. Yeah. I was going to ask you, I figured because you have so much experience that the mindset mindset piece of consistency, because I feel like it's never what the thing is. There's always something behind it, you know? So being able to dig in, like, is it, you're afraid to reach out to people because they're going to tell you no, or you're telling yourself you don't have time, but it's actually just, you're not managing your time. So it's brilliant that you that's already in, in implemented in the book as well, which is so great. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you to click the show notes or in the description, I want you guys to grab the book. Then I want you to take a picture of you listening to the podcast or watching Simon and I right now. And then I want you to throw it in your stories and then tag Simon, tag me and say, I grabbed the book and then just put the consistency pill on there. So everyone knows, you know, what you're talking about and that can encourage others to um, click through and be able to, you know, go, go find uh, his book and grab it as well. Cause I don't know about you guys, but I'm always looking for really great books to read or listen to. And it's helpful when I see other people sharing what they're listening to or reading. So I would appreciate you guys to do that. Um, Simon, what is your Instagram handle? It's Simon W. Chan. Simon W. as in winner, Simon W. Chan. Okay. Awesome. So if you guys can tag Simon on Instagram and you can tag me at the gold digger girl, we'll, I'll give you a shout out obviously. Um, and I'm sure Simon would appreciate that as well. We want to create as much buzz as possible around this book launch because he's worked so hard to put together such an amazing practical tool. And obviously the guy's a legend in the network marketing space, built a team of 200,000 and has decided to dedicate his life to paying it forward and serving others. Like what more could we ask for? So we want to honor Simon and help support him with this launch. So congratulations, Simon. It's so exciting. Hey, thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. Yeah, so glad to have you. So for everyone listening, appreciate you guys joining us. Until next time, get lit in your business and set your soul on fire. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you so, thank you so much, Kim. It's an honor to be on here. And remember, stay consistent and go out there and have a positive impact on someone's life. God bless you all. Amen. Amen.